greetings, salutations, all those nice things. Today's lesson in polynomial functions will have us look at the integral zero theorem. So with this theorem, we're going to be uh, not, just, not just dividing polynomials, but factoring them fully. And this is kind of almost our last step before we're able to, to graph these things. There'll be some other things to put together, but being able to factor fully is going to give us a whole bunch of information as we proceed down the road. The theorem itself says that if x minus a is a factor of the polynomial, and that polynomial only has integer coefficients, then a itself must be a factor of the constant term of p of x. So if you're looking to factor a whole polynomial, there's all sorts of possibilities, and we need a way to narrow that down. So what we do is we take a look at this last term, this constant, and we say that any integer factors of that can give us values of a to stick in right there. Where's my right there? Sorry. So when we look at this negative 6, and we want the val viable values of a, we want all integer factors of 6. So we could we could test if a could be positive or negative 1, because those both are integer factors of 6. The next factor of 6 would be 2. Uh, 3 is also a factor of 6. Oh, 4 is not. 5 is not. But 6 is. And what that means is that if we're, we're testing if, if something is a factor, we, if we're some polynomial, right, p of x equals something, we can test out p of a for each one of these a values, so positive 1, negative 1, positive 2, negative 2, and we'll keep doing that until we actually have one that gives us a remainder of 0 by the remainder theorem. So that's that business there. Anyhow, let's justify that, oh, there's a little bit of a typo here, my apologies. Uh, it doesn't actually change the outcome of the question. But this 3x squared at the beginning should actually be 3x cubed. Anyhow, let's justify that x minus 5 cannot be a factor of this whole thing. And we're going to use the integral 0 theorem to do that. Also, my apologies. So again, that theorem says that the viable test values will come from factors of the constant term. The constant term here is 24. So positive negative 1 could be a viable test value, or positive negative 2, or 3, or 4, because those are all factors of 24. However, 5 is not a factor of 24. Therefore, x minus 5 cannot be a factor of the whole polynomial. Because if we can factor this polynomial into a whole bunch of binomials that are getting multiplied together, this constant term is going to come from the product of all the constant terms we have there. So if 5 doesn't go into this, 5 can't be in the broken down format. And that's just a matter of like prime factorization or factors in general. So that's the business. So we're going to use the theorem to identify a factor of a polynomial. And once we have that, we can factor it out. So it gives us the means to, to factor initially. But then once we factor that a little bit, we can factor further and further. We can keep factoring until the polynomial is factored as much as it can be. For example, we are going to factor this thing. When I'm factoring that, the first thing I'm going to do is state my test values. And this is something that you, you do need to show. So that you're going to test anything that's, a, that's an integer factor of negative 2. 
So you could test positive and negative 1 and positive negative 2. When you do this, there might be values that work. There might be values that don't work. In fact, there might be a lot of values that don't work. You don't need to show yourself testing a value that doesn't work. So I encourage you to actually do that on scrap paper. For example, I'll tell you right now that if you were to test negative 1, it won't work. And to show you that, uh, let's look through here. So p of negative 1 is 2 times negative 1 cubed plus 3 times negative 1 squared minus 3 negative 1 minus 2. And when we evaluate this whole thing, negative 2 plus 3 plus 3 minus 2, which gives me a total of 2. 2 is not equal to 0. So we can therefore say that x plus 1, which is the, the corresponding factor for a equals negative 1, what? Oh gosh, what just happened? We can say that x plus 1 is not a factor. So this part you don't need to show. But if you have one that is successful, then you should show that. So if we test a equals positive 1, and we do that on our scrap paper, and on our scrap paper we, we do all this stuff. Oops. And we get a result from it. What on earth? Plus 3 minus 3 minus 2 equals 0. So in this case where we, we do get a remainder of 0, which allows us to say that the corresponding binomial is a factor, then this you would need to show. So that you'd want to you'd translate onto the error page. If that's done, so now we've got that x minus 1 is a factor. In that case, we can divide. So my next step is to divide as a means of factoring. So I'm going to take 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x minus 2 and I'm going to divide that by x minus 1. And I'll get things happening as a result of that. I'm not going to really talk about the long division right now because that's expected at this point, or the synthetic division. But if you have questions on it, feel free to let me know. And as we again note that that's remainder, that here's our constants, our linear terms and our quadratic terms. We can say then that P of X, our original polynomial, is also the same thing as x minus 1 times 2x squared plus 5x plus 2, where this piece is coming from our quotient here. Note that we got a zero remainder. We should get a zero remainder because we said over here that it's a factor, right? We used the remainder theorem to say that this must be the remainder, and we used the factor theorem to say, well, if the remainder is zero, that it's a factor. So when we perform that division, we should be getting a zero remainder. And if we don't, something has gone wrong somewhere along the line. And you just kind of need to recheck your work. So very key there. This thing is not factored fully. So we just need to factor a little bit further. So the x minus 1 stays same, same. And then 2x squared plus 5x plus 2 
is something that we can factor into a pair of binomials. Uh, for this particular case, it gives us that. So that's our final statement. And this is considered done. We do have a couple more examples. I encourage you to try them again. Uh, don't forget that if, if there are test values that don't work, you don't really have to show them. So like in terms of the room that's allowed for this next question, if you start testing out things and they don't all work, you don't really want to be cramming all that into this room. You can note somewhere on your page to yourself that it didn't work, but for your actual solution, I wouldn't put it down. So looking at this, uh, again, I encourage you to try it. See what test values work. I'll note that the test values you can try would be positive negative 1, positive negative 2, positive negative 4, and positive negative 8, because those are all the integer factors of 8. Now we're going to want to be able to plug in like p of something whenever we test those values, but p of x isn't defined. So in this case, just make sure we have that let statement. So that's that. And then you can test values. Uh, Test, test values out until you get one that works. There is only one that actually works in this case. I'm going to present that one momentarily, but I encourage you to pause this video until you have found that yourself. So if we test out P of four, we get four cubed minus three times four squared minus two fours minus 8, which is 64 minus 48 minus 8 minus 8, which is 0. Therefore, x minus 4 is a factor. Then we can proceed with our division step. Where I'm going to take 1x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x minus 8 and divide it by x minus 4. So again, for performing that division step, boom. Uh, this, yep, that, that, cool. Uh, I will no longer be writing what each of these represents. Again, that will be kind of expected moving forward. But hopefully you can see how this ties to us saying that p of x is the result of multiplying x minus 4 by the quotient here, which is x squared plus x plus 2. In this case, this can't be factored further. If it could be, then you would have to go further with it. But as it is, this one is done. There is one last example. It's a little bit of a doozy, but it could very well be expected of you. On, on an assessment, I wouldn't expect you to have to fully factor a degree five polynomial just for the amount of work that's involved with that. It's a doozy, but a degree four is completely fair. And it, it takes some space and it takes time. So give it a try now, see what you can do. Uh, again, I'll be showing you uh, the results I get that work. So I won't show you me testing out certain values. So worth noting here is that if we want to test values, that we're going to go with 1, 2, 3, uh, what else goes in here? 4 doesn't, 5 doesn't. 6 does. Uh, that pairs with 9. So 3 pairs with 18. 2 pairs with 27. And 
one pairs with 54. So there's a lot of possible options. If you, have our, if you haven't already test out values, test out values, see what works. If you have gone through that, you might have noticed that positive and negative one don't work. So they're kind of off my list. And as I continue to try things, I try P of two. So when I plug that in, I get something out of it. 16 minus I know, uh, 8, so 40. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12. This is 90. This is 54. And when I put that all together, uh, this is like, I don't know, 46, 48, what? Something. Uh, and this is, oh, I don't even want to combine this this way. Let's do this a different way. 90 and 16 is 106, 40 and 12, and 54 is 106. Yeah, that's a zero. So I can state that, which tells me x minus 2 is a factor. I can now do that division-y division step, which I'll do over, sure, here, 1x to the 4 minus 5x cubed minus 3x squared uh, 45 minus 54. So I go through this with my x minus 2, minus 2. And I do my business of multiply, subtract, multiply, subtract, multiply, subtract, multiply, subtract. And at this point, I can say that p of x is x minus 2 times x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 27. If I'm going to factor this further, I'm going to have to figure out what goes into that. And we can test out values for it, but when we do, there's no point testing out anything that didn't already work. So I'm not going to go through here and plug plus or minus 1 into this. Now, in testing stuff for this, I will have to have it with its own definition. I can say that uh, P2 of X be that new quotient of X cubed minus 3X squared minus 9X plus 27. And then I'll proceed to plug things into that. Uh, again, try things out, see what works. I'll let you know that I stumbled upon uh, this. So showing that test, I've got uh, 3 cubed minus 3 times 3 squared minus 9 threes plus 27. Working that out, I get my zero there. All is hunky-dory. So I can say that x minus 3 is a factor. I can do my division. 1x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 27 being divided by x minus 3. I perform all my steps. And at this point, I can say that p2 of x is x minus 3 times the result of that division which means I can say my original p of x is what I had before, x minus 2, multiplied by all that. Factoring it further is just that binomial getting broken down. And for a final step, if there's anything that same same, just make sure that that's condensed. So there's two x minus threes, so we'll square that. And that's our final answer. Again, it was a doozy, 
but we did it. Practice work is at the bottom. I encourage you to give it a go. If you have questions, comments, concerns, let me know however you need to let me know. That's all. I will see you in the future. Goodbye.